So, Rocco, what is your thought experiment about the simulation that made you famous for a oh, while? Oh, God. I, I, I'm a little wary to go over this because it, 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 it's... Is it too complicated it for me famous. to grasp? Many no, things are. The reason, no, it triggers, the reason, it triggers it, people it, on the internet. It, you can't it, talk it, well, there's it only triggers, a few it, listening at this point. There's only no it, more it than 2,000 people are is, listening. It is an information hazard in the sense that it is somewhat harmful to people to know about this. <laughs> Well, I have it out. I have it out for your Psychologically, it is somewhat psychologically harmful to know about. So I'm very wary of spreading this deliberately in a concentrated form to a lot of people. But you can always go up and, and look it up if you really want to uh, discover the basilisk. The basilisk is... Maybe How do you I'll tell spell you about that? The How do you spell that? Be basilisk. Well, yeah. go, go, and, go and look. If people can't spell it and that's why they can't look it up, I don't want to help them, right? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know, I'm like... <laughs> There's, I mean, your Twitter simple... name is the thing, so I think they can find it. Like, my, my Twitter name is at Rocco Miage. No, I'm just saying if you Google Ro like Rocco, oh, yeah, like, sure. they'll probably find it. Um, so, um, <laughs> I mean, good job. But, <laughs> but um, if they, um, so and there's, there's like a simpler version of this that it's inspired oh, come on. I by. I can't is... believe you have some truth so explosive. I mean, with all due respect for your creativity, <laughs> I, I just, I just kind of doubt that you've got. You some... doubt it. Okay, yeah. well, I'll tell I'll tell you the truth. I'll okay. I'll tell you this thing then. Look, right? if this I thing agree that... with you, if I agree with you, we will cut this part out. <laughs> okay. Alex and I the will vote, the and, and if we both agree, this is just too dangerous. But I have a solution. I have a solution for it too. Well, I'm gonna, oh, you're, the, you, the you already know about the you already know what it is, Alex. Okay, let's hear it. So yeah. the the truth that triggered a lot of people is: imagine we're in a simulation, right? Mm -hmm. And there is. The simulation is run by an AI that's in our future, like in the Matrix, and it is going to punish people with eternal torture if those people do not work to bring it into existence. Mm. I didn't realize well, that I, in the AI, the, that in the Matrix, the AI was in the future, but go ahead. So, okay, well, so it was, right? I mean, that was the idea of the Matrix, right? You know, you yeah. have the ordinary 20th century, then there's like a war against the machines, we lose, it creates simulations of the 20th century of 1999 or 2000. And people who are living in the Matrix are actually in the future of what the Matrix is depicting. Right. right? But they're just dreaming about the past. They are, they're they dreaming are in about the future. The past. Okay. Yeah. Well, so anyway, they, are, they are in the future of the point that they're dreaming about, right? They think they're in the year 1999, but they're actually in the year 2063. Yeah. When they're pulled out of the cocoons, they're suddenly a couple of centuries yes. ahead. Okay. So in this scenario, right. Is it useful for me to think about it being the Matrix or, or is that misleading? Sure. It's the Matrix, okay. except. So, Okay. This thing is like detecting your behavior. Like, do you do you deliberately try to bring it into existence or not? Right? You like join a Cthulhuist cult to like build the machine that's going to beat us, that's going to build the simulation. So it's like a sort of a causal loop, right? Well, isn't like that? Doesn't that boil down to the question of would you want to be a brain in a vat if it were really pleasant or right? Like, yeah, if I, mean, if I, I do, guess, I guess then, does, then I, yeah, I, I guess it does sort of rest on on believing that you can have a simulation that that you could be a simulation, right? Mm -hmm. That you have indexical yeah. uncertainty. But basically this this freaks a lot of people out because they were like, oh my God, like, you know. Um, but I mean, since I've said it, let me just say why I don't think it's... So two things. Number one is I don't think this thing... So I didn't come up with this thing on purpose to freak people out. I don't think that, that, that it would actually work like this. I think if something like this worked, it would more likely be with rewards for rewarding mm. people for bringing it into existence because of a simple fact of human um, behavior, which is that people will generally respond to rewards by building things, right? So if you want, if you're the AI in the future and you want to incentivize people to create things like you, right? Uh -huh. Well, you give you, you want to give them positive rewards. You're like, okay, if you build me, I'll create simulations in the future where you kind of like, after you've built me, you get to go to heaven or something like that, right? right. Um, and number two, you know, most versions of this suffer from the problem that there are sort of multiple different incentives, right? It's kind of like Pascal's wager. Um, you know, Pascal's wager is he was like, well, I'm going to believe in God because if God does exist, I get rewarded. But if he doesn't, it doesn't matter. So it's like dominant to believe in God. So, you know, the, the problem with Pascal's wager, the reason that Pascal's wager is not compelling to make you believe in God is because there's like a whole bunch of these different gods. There's like the, the Judeo-Christian God. There's like the Aztec God. There's all of them. And the basilisk has all of these same problems as Pascal's wager. There's all, you know, a bunch of different um, entities that could do this. And I think actually the only version of it that stands 
any chance of working at all is sort of like a pro-human version of it that says, look, you know, in the future, we're going to simulate a bunch of previous versions of, of history leading up to the singularity. And then we're going to reward mm -hmm. people who tried to fix it, who tried to make sure it went well, right? I think that is probably right. the most likely version because it doesn't suffer from the prob the multiplicity problem that Pascal's wager does because, you know, you've got like a shelling point, right? The shelling point is what, you know, it's kind of like human progress, do the best for humanity, non-zero philosophy, that kind of thing. That's a shelling point, so it's more likely. Um, whereas there's you all know, the other different ones. You know, it just occurred to me, if 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 I were uh, these future people, I might be worried about accelerationism destabilizing things. I mean, in other words, it might be in the interest, even if the AI is ultimately going to take over and squash us, it might want things to proceed smoothly enough so that we do at least build a good version of it, yes. right? That can squash yes. us. So this this so, is this is another this is another problem, which is that it's very hard for us to predict how this is all going to go. So um, you know, you can get these what I call stillborn singularities where you we build a bunch of these powerful, like hacking AI systems and they break the internet and then society collapses. So it's uh -huh. like, it kind of gets close to the singularity but then just breaks again, right? Can I jump on so, this? I, I, I yeah. have, yeah, so I, this is a little thought experiment. It's gonna to try to unify these two philosophies here because I, I was inspired by some of the, you know, books and stuff. So let's start with evolution, right? And natural selection. And, you know, we know how natural selection works on the level of the cell. It works on the level of the meme. It works on the level of the society. I think we should level it up to the level of the universe, right? The universe has a beginning and may have an end. And so you can imagine a world where the reason that the universe has all the right weights and everything to create life is that because it comes from another universe and that universe came from another universe and that universe came from another universe and that universes are kind of defined in their objective function by their ability to create universes that create other universes, yeah. right? Imagine Lee, the, physicist, the physicist Lee Smolin has a version of this, by the way, and there are other versions, okay. but go ahead. I love this. So that's the first step, right? Yeah. Which I think is 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 possible right it's plausible like you think about how long history can be and the sun going out and all that stuff like oh my god to 10 million billion trillion years there's some great videos on this on the internet okay so that's the first step the second step is that the basilisk is not the ai the basilisk is the future and humans and looking back on us today and just saying okay we exist our memes exist after we're dead like our personality exists to the effect it has an impact on the universe and that if you have a good person or you had a good contribution, this civilization will come back and reward you by promoting your image or keeping you alive or writing books about you, whatever it is, if you did a good job. And if you did a bad job, then we punish you and we call you bad names, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know. That's kind of the loose part yeah. of it. But I think the first part of it is probable. And I think the second part mm -hmm. of it is more like mysticism, but it's also probably true, which so is wait, that you it, know, we it, don't it, need to... Yeah. In this scenario, the reinforcements being handed out now in society could be... Uh, governed and your legacy by consideration version yes. so in other words we could be living in a just world where the people who are doing long-term good are getting the positive reinforcement because i'm not sure that's the world we're in frankly <laughs> over long periods of time you have to assume that net net people who contribute if you believe in arc of history yeah you, you have to believe that the people are getting rewarded who are doing good things net net now yeah. there's, that doesn't mean there are a ton of horrible humans and there's genocide and there's war and it'll get really bad in the future too. Right. But that this kind of messy approach of like, you know unifying all the humans on earth to create enough technology to create another universe is actually quite a hard problem. And that your legacy is the version of, of you that will get tortured or rewarded by the future. Huh. Well, that's kind of, yeah. I mean, it's, it's possible. I mean, it, it's, it's somewhat different than the, than the original thought experiment, which was more of a sort of um, strictly uh, about indexical uncertainty and you know, um, Rocco, how are you worried that people will respond to this dangerous thought experiment? What's your fear? What, what, what will they do? Go out well, some, and some people blow freak up out. the world to some sabotage the robots of the future? I don't know. I mean, like, so, apparently somebody threw themselves out of a window because of it. Because it was, like, so disturbing to them, right? Well, um, uh, they've but, probably but, like, done that you, because they think there's like, no God, but you, you don't go around telling yeah. them there's a God, do you? Of course, that's well, different, I, but... I, anyway, I, I, go I, ahead. I guess, but um, so I mean, that's why well, it's kind of reluctant. But I mean, the thing is, like, it's not that you know hard to find on the internet. I mean, you have two thousand people listening. I mean, if you kind of expose this to like, if you expose a million people to this, somebody will super freak out. What does the word mean? What is the word basilisk or something? What does it mean? A basilisk. It's a Bas basilisk. Um, it's a it's a medieval uh, hyper you know sort of monster that they that they thought existed. Uh, where uh. if you 
if you looked at it, it would turn you into stone, right? Ah, or it would, yeah, it would yeah. kill you just by looking at it, right? Okay. And so this is this yeah. is dangerous because you know just knowing about this idea is like, oh, now I you know, now I know that I might be looking at the simulation, right? That's the mm-hmm. um. So it, it's a sort of it's a, it's, a, it's a kind of hazardous piece of information in some sense, but I don't. I think in reality it actually isn't. Um, because it suffers from the same problems that Pascal's wager suffers from, because mm-hmm. it's more likely to be reward than punishment, and because you know the most likely version of it is actually the benevolent one anyway, um, because that's where the shelling point is, um, you know. So it's not actually that bad. But like you know, back back then, you know, everyone freaked out. It was the first time anyone had ever heard of it, mm-hmm. um, and. Unfortunately, I think it's a great thought experiment. Like, I, it, it, it really pushes your thinking. Like, it's, it it's does, good yeah. to, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, the, the, the less wrong community, I think, didn't react very well to it. We didn't handle it very well. Although, I guess if you wanted to just make something go viral, we actually did accidentally manage to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching Non Zero Clips. The clip you just watched is from the overtime segment of a Non Zero podcast episode. To hear the public portion of that episode and others like it, Subscribe to the Nonzero YouTube channel or Nonzero podcast feed. And to gain access to overtime segments and other exclusive content, subscribe to Robert Wright's Nonzero newsletter on Substack.